Well, good Sunday morning to everyone out there. Good morning, Northside Church of God and others. Uh, we're so glad that you're joining us this morning. It's 11 a.m. Time to start our online service. I want to welcome you. I'm Pastor David Johnson here at Northside Church of God in Perry. Uh, what a beautiful day that we have to come and worship the Lord together. Uh, we're going to worship the, the Lord here in just a moment in song. Uh, I have a couple worship songs that I, I have that uh, really been on my heart this, this week, um, especially for uh, what's going on. And so I want you to gather up your family and gather around the, the TV or the computer or iPad or however you might be watching this, whether it be live or on replay. And I want you to gather together. Let's take just a few moments to worship the Lord together in song. Um, I'll be back in just in a few minutes, but let's worship the Lord together in song. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. A hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah.
just begin to lift up your hallelujah. Raise it like a banner. Raise it like a flag. Raise it in the middle of the storm. Let it rise. Let it rise. Like a symphony to the key. Everything to you, Jesus. We raise it all up. Sarah 
Amen, church. I want to remind you that He will take us through the fire. He never promised that we wouldn't have to go through a fire, but He always promised to go with us through the fire. And I'm so thankful for that this morning. I hope that these songs minister, minister to you. I know they did me. I'm so glad that I can sing hallelujah to my Savior, my Lord and Savior this morning. And I'm so glad that you have joined us this morning. I, uh, as, as the songs were playing, I noticed that uh, Patrick Anderson from South Korea, who's serving in our military over there, um, said good morning. So we wanted to give a shout out to to Brother Patrick and, and Ann and Adriana uh, this morning serving our military over in South Korea. We're so glad uh, to see you and we're praying for you guys. We love you guys. We miss you all. Uh, so glad to see you here this morning. Glad to see everyone here this morning. Isn't God good? You know, even though we're going through all the things that we are going through, um, you know, maybe some have lost their jobs. Maybe some have been laid off, maybe their hours have been cut, maybe some are sick, maybe some have uh, lost a loved one uh, through this, uh, this uh, disease, um, but I want to let you know that the Lord is still with us. He will never leave us or forsake us. He will go with us through the fire. Amen. I just wanted to pray uh, before we move on to the message and just pray for each and every person out there, whether you might be watching live or or on the replay, I want you to know that you're on our heart and we're, we're going to pray for you and just ask the Lord to, to bless you and to keep you and to be with you, uh, to protect us all from what's going on. I know we're kind of starting to move back into uh, normalcy, um, however long that might take, whatever that means these days. Uh, but I just can't wait until we are gathered together in the house of the Lord on Sundays, even though we may not be here in this building together. I know that we're, we're here together um, on, over Ustream or, or on, online and however you may be watching this. Um, I want you to know that you're on our mind and we love you and miss you. We can't wait to be back together. But let's pray and just ask the Lord's blessings upon these next few moments of time. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. Lord, I know, Lord, that you have a plan for each and every person, Father. You have a plan and a purpose through everything, Father. Lord, I know that all things work together for our good. Lord, and we just thank you, Lord, for, for all that you're doing, all the good that you're doing in our life. You never promised that everything was good, would be good, but you promised that you would turn it to our good. And Father, I pray, Lord, for every person. Lord, under the sound of my voice, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would just bless them and be with them. Father, that you would keep them and give them peace, Lord, and strength. Lord, I pray if, if they're sick in their body, I pray, God, for healing. Father, I pray, Lord, if they're bound, I pray for deliverance. Father, I pray if they're not saved, Lord, today would be their day of salvation. And Father, I pray for your protection upon us, Lord, that you would touch us and bless us, Lord. We pray for our leadership. We pray for wisdom, Lord, for our president on down. Father, we pray, God, that you would just touch us and you would help us in a mighty way. Father, Lord, that you would touch our communities, Lord, that you would just move. Lord, that this disease would be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord, we plead the blood over every family, over, over every person. Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that through everything you would be glorified. And Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for, for who you are and what you've done in our life, Lord. And Lord, that even though we may go through the fire, we know that you are there with us. Lord, I pray your blessings upon every person. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen, Amen, Amen. This morning I want to bring a message to you that, that the Lord's been dealing with me for actually a few weeks. And, and I know that uh, you know we got through um, Palm Sunday and Easter and, and all of those kind of uh, days that we celebrated um, and, and I brought some messages according to the, the calendar, I guess you would say, um, that the uh, Lord laid on my heart for those days. But he's also been dealing with me about, you know, bringing these uh, messages to you uh, after Easter. And, um, and so probably for the next couple, three weeks, we're going to be talking about uh, the rapture of the church, the last days, the second coming of Christ. Um, 
however the Lord lays it out for me is, is how I want to lay it out for, for all of us. I believe that in these days that we need to be aware. I believe that we need to, especially as Christians, we don't need to stick our head in the sand and not be aware of the things that are going on um, around this world and even here in America. But I believe that we need to be prepared. I believe that we need to uh, share. I believe that we need to speak to our neighbors and our family um, because, church, our time is short. And so I, I really feel like I uh, have a message for, for us this morning, and I, I believe it uh, for the next few weeks we're going to uh, be diving into this series. I've, I've entitled this series, When Jesus Shows Up Again. Now, it's a couple weeks ago I... I, I preached on the subject when Jesus shows up, but I kind of changed the title just a tad when Jesus shows up again. And so I want to talk about that here for the next few moments, and I hope that that you will tune out everything. I, I hope that anything that would be a distraction, that you would just turn it off. Um, and for the next few moments, whether you're watching this live or on replay, I hope that you would give the attention to the Word of the Lord, um, and so that that you can receive what I feel like the Lord has uh, for the church, uh, but not only for the church, for the world um, in these last days. But I want to read a, a few verses of Scripture found in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, and I'm going to start in verse number fifty. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. I'm just going to give you just a moment to find it on your phone or your computer, iPad, or maybe you have a Bible. Praise the Lord for that. Um, but 1 Corinthians 15, 50. If you found your place where you shout hallelujah, I think I could probably hear you. Verse 50 says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. But behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Again, I want to talk to us for a few moments on this subject, this thought. When Jesus shows up again. And if you want a subtitle to today's message, it would be the rapture. The rapture of the church. Would you bow your heads with me just for another moment? Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing over his word. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We pray, Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would speak to us this morning. Lord, I pray, God, that you would anoint me as your servant this morning, Father. Lord, I, that you would take away all of my thoughts, Father, and Lord, that I would speak your thoughts, not my opinion, Lord, but your word. And Father, I pray, God, that you would touch us and you would help us in a mighty way. Father, that you would anoint us, Lord, not only to hear your word this morning, but to receive it. Lord, someone may watch this video a week from now or a month from now, but Father, I pray, God, that you would anoint this video to go forth in power and anointing and in authority. Lord, that lives would be changed, Father, that we would wake up, open up our eyes to see that you are soon coming. 
And Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to read another verse of scripture that goes right along with 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 through 18. Where Paul says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, and the voice of an archangel with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together and with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. This morning I want to just take a few moments to do what the Apostle Paul said. To comfort one another with these words. To let us know that Jesus is coming back for his church. And it's going to happen very soon. We are living in the last days. That is not something that we should be afraid of or fearful of. That is something that especially as the church we should be excited about. We should make sure that our own houses are in order, that our hearts are right with the Lord, that we are pure before Him, that there is nothing between us and Him that would hinder us to make us miss this event called the rapture. You know, I'm going to tell you something. When Jesus shows up, things change. But when Jesus shows up again on this earth, things will really change. What is the rapture. Let's lay a little foundation here this morning as we, we move on. What is the rapture? The word is proper, properly used as an event. Rapture is a state or experience of being carried away. The English word rapture comes from a Latin word rapio, which means to seize or snatch in relation to an ecstasy of spirit or the actual removal from one place to another. In other words, it means to be carried away in spirit or in body. The rapture of the church means the carrying away of the church from heaven to earth. The Greek word derived in 1 Thessalonians 4.17 that I read to you this morning is translated caught up. So in other words, it, the, the word means caught up. The Greek word translates harpazo, which means to snatch or take away, to seize, catch away, pluck, pull, take by force. Elsewhere, the word harpazo is used to describe how the spirit caught up Philip near Gaza and brought him to Caesarea in Acts 8.39. And the word is also used to describe Paul's experience of being caught up into the third heaven in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 and 4. Thus, there can be no doubt that the word is used in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17 to indicate the actual removal of people from earth to heaven. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying here that the word... And first, what I read to you in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 17, the word in, in, in the original Greek is harpazo, which was also used in, in a couple of different places in the New Testament where Philip was caught up and, and removed from the earth and, and to another place. And then when uh, the Apostle Paul was also caught up and he had a vision in heaven. And so this morning, the word harpazo that we find in 1 Thessalonians 4.17 means to be caught up. I'm getting somewhere, so hang with me. Even though the actual word rapture is not in the Bible, it can be easily interpreted in the original Greek and Hebrew language that we are going to be caught up, caught up, caught away 
someday soon. Now, you know, some people have say, well, there's no such thing as a rapture because the word rapture is not found in the Bible. But I want to challenge us this morning to show me where the word Bible is used in the Bible. Where the word Trinity is used in the Bible. How about the word incarnation? Show me where that is used in the Bible. And the word divinity. Now, we, I think we all believe, I, I hope we do, that, that there is an actual Bible. That Jesus Christ uh, experienced incarnation. That there is the Trinity of the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And divinity. But these actual words are not found in the Bible. So should we throw them out? Just like some people try to throw out the word rapture. My answer to you is no. Even though the actual word rapture is not found in the Bible, we understand the, 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 the original Greek where it means to be caught up, to catch away. Just like these words Bible or Trinity or incarnation or others. There's some examples of the rapture in the Bible. We are not the first ones that will be caught up or caught away or raptured in the Bible. There are actually seven raptures mentioned in the Word, besides the ones I've already mentioned with Philip and Paul. How about Enoch? Enoch was caught away, translated in Genesis 5.24, where it says that Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Hebrews 11.5 by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. How about 2 Kings chapter 2? And you can read the story in verses 1 through 18 where we see that Elijah was taken up to heaven in a chariot of fire. Verse 11 says, Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire, separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Caught away. We see that Jesus himself ascended to heaven in Acts chapter 1 and Luke 24, where Acts 1 9 says, Now when he had spoken these things while they watched. He was taken away, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Jesus ascended to heaven, kind of the picture of the rapture that's going to be taking place. How about John in Revelation 4? After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet, speaking with me, saying, Come up here. And I will show you things which must take place after this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another example would be Revelation 11 and 12, which hasn't happened yet. When the two witnesses ascended to heaven on a cloud, 11, Revelation 11, 12 tells us. The seventh one is, is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 1 Corinthians 15. What I read to you this morning the rapture or the catching away of the church. Now who will be raptured? Who will be raptured? 1 Corinthians 15.50 says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3.3, 3, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus said that we must be born of water and of spirit. Jesus said in Matthew 25, you can read through that story, starting in verse number 34, and then 41, 46 is what I want to read this morning. 34 says, Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the world. Verse 41 says, Then he 
will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, and to the everlasting Father prepared for the devil and his angels. Then 46 says, And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. How about the parable of the wheat and the tares in Matthew chapter 13 verse 30 where it says, Let both together, let both grow together unto the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Church, there will be a great separation that when the rapture happens, only the elect of God, the saved, the ones that are born of the Spirit, living for God, will inherit the kingdom of God. Who will be raptured? Who will be raptured? The church will be raptured. The ones that are pure, that are white as snow. Now I want us to understand this morning that just because you go to church doesn't mean you're going to be raptured. Just because you've been baptized doesn't mean you're going into rapture. Just because you give your in your tithes and offering every week doesn't mean you'll be raptured. Just because you're a good person doesn't mean you're going to be raptured. The thing that separates the wheat from the tares, the thing that separates the elect from those that aren't going. No things that separate those that will go to the reward in heaven from those that will be sent to a, a, a ter terrible place called hell. There's one thing that separates and what it is is this. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It does not matter again if you show up in church every week. If you give. If you are a good person. If you work in food banks and you give uh, your clothing and you do all of these things that will not matter the thing that will matter the, the most the thing that the only thing that will matter is your name written down in the lamb's book of life is your name in that book that's all that will matter because that's the only ones that will go i know that probably most of us have seen the videos where there's a church full of people and and the, the trump sounds and the rapture happens. And probably a third of the people are there left as everyone else during the service is raptured. And they're gone. And the people that are there, about a third of the people are there in the church. And they're just looking around with their hands up. And, and some know what happened and they start crying. I'm telling you, that day is coming. Because there's only two ways that we are leaving this earth. Number one, by death. Number two, by the rapture. And here's the thing, we don't know the time or the place for either one. We don't know exactly when the rapture is going to take place, and none of us know when, when death's going to take place. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to scare anybody in no way, shape, or form this morning. I don't believe you can scare people to salvation, but I want us to open up our eyes and think. I know people, and I have seen people, and maybe you know too, that there's people that have that thought they were right or, or, or just played church and they left the church and before they got home, an, a car accident happened or something happened where they didn't even make it to the next day. They didn't even make it to the next destination. But I want to tell us this morning, we must be ready for either the rapture or death, whichever comes first, but either or are, are going to come one way or the other. The rapture could take place any second. Death could take place any second. We don't know. We don't know. You could be sitting in your lazy boy this morning and not ever get out of it. We don't know. Or you could be sitting in your lazy boy this morning and the Lord calls and you meet Him in the air. We just don't know. Here's the bottom line. We must be ready. We must be ready. How are we ready, Pastor? By having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Somebody said, oh, that's, that's hard. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't believe that. I'm telling you, it's the best relationship you'll have on this earth and beyond. It's all about eternity. I mean, 
Think about it. If we live a hundred years on this earth, what is a hundred years compared to eternity? It's just a drop of water in the ocean. It's just, it's just a vapor, James says. Our life is like a vapor. Here for a moment and gone. I don't know about you, but I want to live my life in eternity. And here's another thing. We're living in our eternity now. Ever since we were born, we're living in our eternity now. And you may, you may not like me after this. You may think that you know this is unpopular preaching. But I'm telling you, we're living in our eternity now. There's two destinations. There's two roads. Jesus said there's two roads. One is life or heaven. One is death or a place called a hill. That's it. There's no in between. There's no waiting here, waiting there, waiting for uh, this, that, or the other. There's two roads. One leads to heaven, one leads to hell. The question is, what road are you on today? What road are we on today? I hope that everyone that, that is hearing this message, hearing this, the heart of this preacher this morning, I hope that we all have a personal relationship with the Lord and we are on the right road headed to heaven. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be on, headed to the wrong road. You know, I've seen a sign on a church several months ago that said it's, it's bad enough if we are headed to hell, but it's even worse if we're taking our children with us. What kind of example are we for our children, our grandchildren? Are we leading them down the right road or are we leading them down the wrong road? Again, I know this is, is not popular, but I, I, I'm here to tell us the truth this morning. Last weekend we celebrated the, the risen Savior and this weekend, I want to tell you, He still lives. And He is here to save us this morning. He is here to wipe away all of our sin this morning. Hallelujah. I feel His presence in this place. He is here. He is in your living room this morning. He is in your bedroom this morning. He is wherever you are this morning. And He is calling. If you don't have a right relationship with the Lord... He is calling this morning and He is saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. The things that are happening in this world, and, and for the next few weeks we're going to talk about that, but the things that are happening in this world, He is preparing His church. He is trying to prepare the world for His soon coming. Because it is His will that none of us shall perish. It is His will that none of us go to this place called hell. He wants to spend eternity with you and I. He doesn't want us to, to end up in that place. And somebody might say, well, He's a God of love. He'll never send us to that place. Well, I got news for you. You better read the Bible. Because that loving God will, will at one point, his, his mercy and His grace will run out and He'll become the judge. But today, I'm telling you that His mercy and His grace is extended to us this morning. So that if death comes or the rapture comes, we are ready. Amen? We are ready. You know, the, the, what I read to you this morning, the, the, in verse 51, it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery, that we shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. The word mystery here means a secret and that Paul is revealing the secret that the people didn't know or understand that when Jesus returns for His church, not all of us will be dead. Now that was probably a new concept for the, the, the church at this time when Paul is writing this. And even a, maybe a new concept for, for some that, that you mean some people are going to be living when Jesus comes to return for His church? And the answer is yes. We are not all going to see death. We are going to see the rapture. Amen. Not all of us are going to see death. And that's the mystery that, that Paul is explaining here in verse 51. And he says, In a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. 
Now, science, science tells us that a blink of an eye is about four-tenths of a second. A twinkling of an eye is about ten one-hundredths of a second. So basically, I want to I want to tell you know I've heard people say, well, well, I'll make sure that I'm ready. I, you know, I'll, I'll when I see all this coming, I, you know, I'll ask for forgiveness. And these, well, I'm telling you, you are living on the edge. <laughs> I would not want to live on the edge personally. I want to make sure I am ready, 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 ready. I don't want anything to, to hinder me from going to heaven in the rapture. But I want you to understand that basically. In a tenth, what the Bible is saying here, in a tenth of a second, faster than I could snap my fingers, faster than we could turn on a light switch and the lights come on, in less than a tenth of a second, the dead in Christ will rise and we will all be transformed to an incorruptible body and we will meet Jesus in the air. Now, I don't know about you, but less than that, I don't know if that's enough time to repent. And you don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know if that's enough time to repent. And I wouldn't want to take that chance this morning, church. Jesus could be here and gone, meeting Him in the air. Now, won't that be a sight? I don't even know if we'll be, it will happen so fast, I don't even know if we'll be able to see it. To see the, the graves burst open and the, the, the coffins burst open and the bones and the dust and everything come together. Be out to, to see and see all the people that might have died at sea come shooting out of the air to meet the Lord in the air. What a sight that would be if we, if we could even see it in that tenth of a second. But I don't know about you, but if, but if I'm living and, I'm, and I believe I will be, and Jesus calls, it's going to be that fast. That this old body will be incorruptible. And I will be transformed to a glorified body. I can't wait for that day. The rapture of the church, we will meet Jesus in the air. And He will come quickly. Like a thief in the night, the Bible says. The Bible says a man and a woman, a man and wife, will be in bed. One will be gone. One will be left. Two people working in the field, one will be gone. One will be left. There will be no time to repent, church, is what I'm trying to tell us. We must be ready. We must be ready. You know, I've said this many years now, many years. It's not original with me. But I want to be ready. I want to work like he's coming in a hundred years. But I want to live like he's coming in the next second. We got to work. We got to be prepared. We can't just, just take vacation and just wait for him to come. I don't know about you, but I've heard it for 50 years. That He's coming, He's coming, He's coming. But I want to tell you, we're 50 years closer than I first heard it. He's coming, church. Look around, look, at, look around. And again, in the next few weeks, we're going to talk about some more specific things about the world and current events and things lined up. But I'm here to warn us this morning that we, we may not have another week. We may not make it till next Sunday. The Lord may call us home one way or the other. And I want to make sure that, that another week doesn't go by that we are not ready. We must be ready for His soon coming return. I want, to, I want to remind us that the rapture is a different event from the second coming of Christ. And we're going to talk about that again in the next few weeks, but the second coming of Christ is different from the rapture. The rapture, we won't have time to repent. We won't ha have time to be ready, to get ready. We must be ready. The second coming of Christ, He will come 
in all his glory with the saints of God with him and every eye will see him. Revelation 1.7 But the rapture, the world won't see him. They won't know what happened. I mean, you talk about the COVID virus and the things that are going on now and, and all of the questions and everything that's going on. What do you think is going to happen when maybe a billion or a couple billion people are gone? All the children are gone. All the, the church is gone. What's going to be their explanation? What's going to, be, what's going to happen? We're going to be gone. Billion, probably billions of people will be gone. What, what is the, how is the world going to respond to that? Amen? Think about that. Well, Matthew 24, 30, 31 says, Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So maybe you, you say, Pastor David, when is the rapture? I understand there's a rapture. I understand who's going in the rapture. But when is the rapture? Well, Matthew 24 tells us. But of that day and hour, no one knows. <laughs> no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but only the Father. But as the days of Noah were, listen, but as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus answered and said to them, uh, and continuing Matthew 24, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. You will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these days must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, Earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. I'm going to stop here for a second. Look at the newspaper. Look at the news. <laughs> are these things not happening? Are earthquakes happening in places that have never happened before? Maybe been hundreds of years. Or maybe first time ever. Volcanoes erupting. Pestilence. Famines. How about this virus that we haven't seen in over a hundred years, something like this. Rumors of wars, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Let me ask that, that question. Is, is the Christian faith being attacked more than ever now or not? I'm telling you. They call us intolerant. They call us not loving. They, 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 the Christian faith is under attack like no other time in history probably. Well, except for maybe in the beginning. And then many will be offended. <laughs> Come on, somebody. We'll betray one another. We'll hate one another. Are we not seeing that these days? Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. You know, I, I, I heard a, a statistic this week that in America, 2,000 churches are closing every year because people are leaving the church. People are not attending church like they used to. People are, are, you know, a regular attender these days. It used to be two or three times a week when you were a regular attender. Now a regular attender is if, they, if you show up once a month. Come on, somebody. 
What's going on? Are we living in the last days or not? Think about that. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. You know, the, the gospel is being preached all over like never before because of the internet. I mean, think about it for a second. How many, maybe hundreds or thousands or even millions of people are receiving the word of God in these la this last month over the internet that maybe haven't received it? And maybe ever, they're watching it on, on the internet. They're watching all over the world. Maybe those that wouldn't even come into a church service are watching. Think about that. We're living in the last days, church. You know, I believe in the pre-trib rapture of the church. In other words, what are you saying, Pastor? In other words, before the tribulation time, a seven-year tribulation time, which we're going to talk about in the, within the next few weeks. But within the seven-year tribulation time that we believe will be happening, some believe in a pre-trib rapture, some believe in a mid-trib rapture, some believe in a rapture after the tribulation, some don't believe in a rapture at all. But we believe in the pre-trib Rapture. In other words, before the tribulation period, the seven year tribulation period comes, that the church will be raptured. That's what we believe. So that we won't have to go through the, the, the tribulation period. We won't have to go through all of that. The, the uh, wrath of God during that time. But I believe that He's coming back for those that are ready. That He is looking for a church that is without spot or blemish. He is looking for a holy, pure church. You know, I believe that we need to be ready. We need to be ready. We need to live our life, like I said a, a couple moments ago, that we work like He may not be coming in a hundred years, but that we are ready for if He comes in the next second. We need to be ready. And, I, and let, me, let me say this. Whether you believe in the pre-trib, the mid-trib, after the trib, or you don't believe in the trib, I want you to know this. We have to be ready. It really doesn't matter which way you believe, but we have to believe that we're ready. Because if there's no rapture and there's no tribulation and there's only the second coming of Christ, which some believe, we need to be ready for that. We need to be ready for when He calls His church. We need to be ready for when He comes. In closing, I want to read this verse. Therefore, my brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Church, we need to be ready. We need to be working. We need to be steadfast. We need to be immovable. Don't allow the world to, to let us compromise or move away from our beliefs. We need to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. We need to work until He comes. We don't need to take our ease. We, don't need, we need to work even harder because we know we're living in the last days and that He is coming soon. I hope and pray this morning that we are ready to see Jesus. Again, whether He calls this church home, the rapture takes place, or death takes place, and we meet Him. Whether we meet Him in the air, or we meet Him in death. This morning, I hope and pray that we are ready. But I want to tell you this morning, if we're not ready, the Bible says that today is your day of salvation. And I want to pray for you, 
And why I pray would you, if you would say, Pastor David, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Maybe it's the first time. Maybe it's been a while. Maybe you've turned your back to the Lord and you're living your own life. But this morning, you would say, whether you're watching this live or on replay, you would say, Pastor David, today, I want to give my heart and my life to the Lord. I want to ask you, as I pray for you, would you just pray and ask the Lord to come into your heart? All you got to do is ask Him to forgive you, to live in you, to wipe you clean, that you will serve Him with all of your heart. It's not hard to live for God. People try to say it is. It's not hard because we do it because we love Him. Let's pray. Father, I love you. I praise you. I pray, Holy Spirit, Lord, that you are arresting hearts this morning. Maybe there's one, maybe there's more that are is hearing my words, Father, that would say, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need you to come into my heart. I need you to, to wipe me clean, to forgive me of all of my sins. Father, I know that you are faithful to forgive Father, this morning I pray for each person. I pray, God, that you would help us. For those that don't know you, I pray today, God, would be their day of salvation. I pray today they would surrender all to you. Father, I pray, God, that you would touch them and help them to be with them. Lord, I pray for the church this morning. I pray for those that, that are on our way to heaven, Father. I pray, God, that you would help us. Help us, Lord, to continue to live a pure life before you. Help us, Lord, to live a life that is unhindered by sin. Help us, Father, Lord. If there, there is something, Lord, that is, is holding us back, Father, I pray, God, that you would help us. Help us, Lord, to give it to you, to cast our care upon you, for you care for us, Father. And I pray, God, that you would touch us this morning. Help us, Lord, to, to be willing vessels, Father, that you can use for your glory. Father, we praise you and we thank you for all that you do and all that you're going to do in our lives. Lord, I thank you for those that, that made a decision for you today. God, I pray your blessing upon them. I pray, God, that you would help them. Lord, I pray that they would have a passion for you like no, never before. Father, to get to know you more. And Father, we praise you and we thank you for all that you do and all that you're going to do. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' holy and wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. This morning, I want to ask you, if you've asked the Lord to come into your heart this morning, I'm going to ask you just to message me or text me or how, you know, you don't, you could comment me if you like, but, but I want to, to know, I want to pray for you. I'm going to ask the Lord to touch you and to help you in a mighty way. I believe he, He's here. And I believe if you were sincere with your prayer this morning that, that He has forgiven you. The Apostle Paul says that if you're in Christ, you're a new creation. That all the old is passed away. Behold, all becomes new. And you're a new creation in Christ this morning. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for every person that, that is hearing us, that tuned in this morning. I'm going to put just a little link up here this morning. If you are interested in, in giving uh, to the ministry of Northside, um, you can give online or mail your, your check to the church. Thank you, Northside Church of God family, for your faithfulness in giving. Um, as you know, we, we were able to feed our, our local hospital staff lunch this past Friday because of your faithfulness and your giving. Um, not only the day shift, uh, we were able to feed them uh, lunch, but also the night shift. They don't usually eat lunch in that sense, um, but we were able to, to, at their request, to, to get them like snacks and things that they can go throughout the night. Um, so we got, were able to get them a couple buckets of snacks so that they can uh, snack. But I want uh, you to know I appreciate you uh, for all of your giving, all your faithfulness, even during this time. Uh, our church is strong, um, and so it's because of you and your faithfulness to the Lord and to the church. 
And so I want to thank you for that. Um, if, if someone's out there and, and you don't have a, a regular home church and you would like to, to send maybe a one-time gift to the ministry, uh, send it on. We, we appreciate it and we love you. And I want to tell you, it'll be used for the glory of God. Amen. Um, we do ministry around here. We're all about our community and seeing souls saved to make disciples. Um, again, we, we want to say thank you for all that you do and, and your giving. And uh, God bless you for that. I know that God takes perfect records and, and that he will bless you uh, beyond your belief. And so we're thankful for that. Um, Northside, if you need us for any reason, please don't hesitate to call. Um, contact us if we can go and get you something or you need something or whatever we can do to, to, to be a blessing to you, to help, to serve you. We want to do that um, or anybody out there. Um, we appreciate you and we thank you. Thank you again for tuning in, whether you're live or, or um, on the replay. We appreciate you um, tuning in, and God bless you. We, we love you. We, we appreciate what the Lord is doing in your life. Um, we miss you. Northside, we miss you. Hopefully, um, in the next few weeks, I hope we'll be able to meet again soon, um, depending on how... Things are going, but I know we're headed in that direction. So um, I'm glad that, that at least we have this, this uh, way to communicate. And again, thank you for, for tuning in. We love you and appreciate you. God bless you. I'm going to get off of here. And I hope that you enjoy your Sunday. And uh, again, if you need us for any reason, please don't hesitate to call. God bless you. We love you. See you soon. See you Wednesday at 7. God bless.